Sonic Unleashed, the most polarizing Sonic game of all. A game that is both hated by the critics, but loved by the fans. But today, we are not going to discuss how good the game is. Today, I'll show you the cut content, the betas, the demos, the secrets and the things that you probably didn't know about the game. Most of the stuff covered is already documented on the Sonic Wiki, Sonic Retro, the Cutting Room Floor and Hidden Palace, so this video is for those of you who are too lazy to do the research yourselves. I also recommend checking out Cybershell's bonus videos on Sonic 1 and Sonic 2, as that's where I got the video and title idea from. Much like the Sonic 06 and Sonic Heroes videos I made, I think that starting by covering the stuff that didn't make the final cut is the best option. Although Sonic Unleashed doesn't have as much cut content as you would expect. I'll start by covering the PS2 and the Wii versions of the game, as they don't have nearly as much cut content as the HD version for the PS3 and the 360 does, which means it should be pretty quick. Starting by the PS2, there is some unused text that could be referring to a debug menu of some sort. There is also an unused text saying that the Havoc animation key has expired. As for the Wii, there are leftover graphics for the trial version of the game, and exist in both English and Japanese. In Apoto's second nighttime tutorial, an unused 1-up item box is loaded outside of the mission barriers, where a regular secret item box normally exists. The graphic is taken from Sonic 06 instead of the image of Sonic's head used in the final game. And that's all for the SD version of the game, I told you it would be quick. Now let's get into the scrapped content of the HD version. This file is a leftover from the E3 demo for Sonic Unleashed. Most of the files are duplicates which are used elsewhere, but it contains two images not seen anywhere else. They were likely used as the background. It depicts Windmill Isle, Rooftop Run and Dragon Road. These were likely the stages playable at E3. The background was also used for the title screen in the downloadable Sonic Unleashed demo on the PS3 and the 360 digital stores. This texture was used for selecting menu options. There's a strangely large number of settings on here, as well as a continue option, not something you would expect at an E3 demo. Some of this was probably unused there too. In the loading folder on the root of the disk, there are two control tutorial images which seem to be for an event like E3. The Werehog's controls omit the labels for the camera and the unleashed move, and Sonic's controls only label moves in his base moveset. Also present in the loading folder is an early version of the Hubworld preview for Spagonia. It is mostly the same, but the icons were changed completely between versions, and the early version screenshot of the university is closer to the top than in the final version due to an icon of pickle in the way. The relevant icon was moved downward in the final image. Present only on the PS3 version of the game is a folder named Install, containing images that would have been used during an install process. This folder also exists in the Windows port of Sonic Generations. There is also UI left over from the install process. Now let's look at some unused sections of some stages. These sections of the stages were abandoned by changes in the level design, but can still be found through breaking the game. Strangely, they were later used in modified forms in the Adventure Pack DLC. A closed door is present in the room at the end of Jungle Joyride Act 1 Night. Clipping through using a glitch reveals an empty chamber. If the room is accessed from the ghost mission, the door will be open and the room will contain objects. There is a tree which can be knocked down and used as a bridge, floating platforms and switches that raise the water level. These switches are mostly functional, the kill plane and platforms rise, but the actual water graphics remain in place. After the gold ring in Arid Sand's main night stage, there is a sealed door. There are, among other things, two pillars that you can knock down, which don't appear elsewhere. 
Eventually, you will reach a pit which is impassable without objects to bridge the gap. Beyond it is a fairly large stretch of level, leading up to the Gaia Temple. This area in the mission Play It Cool is only accessible on Xbox 360. Strangely, the PlayStation 3 version of the game has this area sealed off. And that's most of the cut content covered, now let's analyze the E3 2008 demo, the beta and the preview build. This is where it gets really interesting. But first, I wanna mention something that doesn't have much to do with this section of the video. One of the stranger subsequent mysteries that wasn't solved until 2022 was the origin of an infamous image relating to Sonic Unleashed, where Sonic makes a contorted face of horror while being shocked by Eggman's machine. Once believed to be part of the opening, it's actually quite different in a final FMV. This image was found to be sourced from a March 2008 leak of images that included pictures of a work-in-progress intro FMV, along with other images of Unleashed. And now let's start by covering the differences between the E3 demo and leftovers and the final game. I will also include beta analysis in this E3 section. The E3 version has a different press start button prompt compared to both the preview build and the final game. The background also looks quite different. The Werehog HUD has a more simplistic design, also featuring the current distance from the player's spawn and coordinates. Here is a scrapped HUD element to display the current time of day, perhaps suggesting time would pass dynamically rather than using the hourglasses. You can see in this video a one-up item capsule design which ended up being used in the Wii version of the game. And as you can see in this clip, they were reusing the model and textures from Sonic 06's unused shield item box. The accelerator gun uses a red outline in the E3 prototype. The boost is white instead of blue. Here is a trailer of the beta of Sonic Unleashed and you can see some very early footage of Aporos and Mazuri. You can also access the entire beta geometry of Savannah Citadel in the game's preview build. And speaking of the preview build, let's analyze it now. On the 6th of December of 2016, user Ninja of the Sonic fan site Sonic Retro leaked a disc containing the preview version of Sonic Unleashed for the Xbox 360. Unfortunately, only the first disc of this build has been found and dumped, and the second is most likely lost, but even the disc that we have has a wealth of differences compared to the final. We can estimate that the disc was burned on the 1st of September of 2008. Here you can see the hub world transformation scenes, something that I can only describe as being incredibly cursed. The preview build videos are quite obviously placeholders, as the lighting on the characters is very basic. The particle effects and werehog fur shader are also missing, as well as any audio that isn't a character's voice. Aside from this, the scenes were reanimated as well. Sonic transforming into the werehog is basically just a more detailed version of the preview video, but vice versa omits Sonic's little hop at the end. Though a work in progress version of the final menu is accessible from the title screen in this build, the old main menu from E3 still exists in the files and can be accessed with the install debug menu. All upgrades are unlocked from the start, and the player's stats are always maxed out, likely for testing purposes. Early versions of the game's DLC are included in here, likely explaining why the build couldn't fit in one disc. This version has no drift. The bobsled is still a work in progress. And some stages end earlier than in the final version. There are slight differences in stage layouts. While the HUD in the Hedgehog levels is mostly finalized, the Werehog still uses the earlier HUD from the E3 build. 
The homing attack radical hasn't been changed from E3 yet. Sonic's model has been updated since E3 and uses the final model, but still retains certain particle effects such as the jump ball effect. This version contains the higher resolution global illumination maps that are normally bundled with the DLC. You can max out the boost meter by pressing LB and RB. This key combo immediately maxes out your boost meter. You can press LB, RB and B to show the debug UI texture and the cursor to be controlled. You can also move or resize windows or the debug button by holding A and moving the stick. Clicking it with the cursor will access the developer menu. Pressing it again will exit it. Using Y in the combo disables the cursor and just shows the icon as well. The game still reads general inputs so be careful when using it. The final title screen loop contains a teaser animation before the trailer portion, which is missing in the preview build. The preview build's video appears to be identical to the E3 trailer, complete with a coming holiday 2008 screen which lists the game's website. Amusingly, the final game's footage appears to depict this very preview build, or at least one that shares a lot of similarities with it. Notably, the Werehog seems to have seen more progress in that build. Now let's explore the debug menu a bit, since there's some interesting stuff hidden within. This folder is a stage select. Selecting any of these presents you with a list of stages, including the main act and the sub act. Each loads the respective stage. Stages missing from the disk can be restored by porting files from the final game. This folder is a hub world select. Interestingly, some of these use alternate internal names compared to the stage select. Besides Eggman Base, which takes you straight to the Eggman Land Hub area since there's only one, selecting any of these allows you to load into either the hub world or the entrance stage during either the daytime or nighttime. European City and Petra Capital have extra options for Professor Pickle's labs in those two areas. Again, hubs missing from the disk can be restored using files from the final game. This folder is a boss select. Each option takes you to the respective boss. Here is a list of test areas for Sonic. Unfortunately, all of these crash the game. It's up to speculation whether the files are on the second disc or if they were simply left out of this build. And here is a list of test areas for the Werehog. Like the previous folder, all of these crash. Somewhat related to before, this seems to be something of a scratch pad for level designers, allowing them to quickly jump to specific areas and the like. The Japanese characters display as question marks in the menu itself, curiously. The Stage Sonic folder contains subfolders with the name of the stages present in the game. Opening any of the files will crash the game, at least I think so, because I didn't open each and every file because there are tons of files inside of these folders and it would have taken hours to do so. However, in each subfolder there is another folder called old underscore and then the name of the stage, suggesting that an older version of each stage might have been present in the disk, as well as some different versions of the stage refer to ver1, ver2, ver3, new ver3, ver4, etc. They also contain a file with a date that would supposedly refer to a version built on the 10th or 16th of January of 2008, the 6th of February of 2008, the 2nd, 11th or 18th of April of 2008, the 5th of June of 2008 or the 12th of August of 2008. Some stages contain specific stage tests, such as Oloska, that includes a water run test. The subfolders include in some stages different areas of each stage, as suggested by the names of some of the files. The same goes for the stage evil folder, except that they don't include the Werehog's old stages, and usually only include one or two files that have box in the name, which I don't know what it could be referring to. This folder would have been used for testing the NPC's behavior, but none of the files loads. 
This folder could have been used for grass and particle testing, as suggested by the names of the only two files present in it. None of them load as well. The design check folder contains files that refer to Sonic and Evil, the Werehog's codename, with a number in front of it. This might suggest different designs for the models of each character, but it's impossible to know from in-game since none of the files load. Now we hit something that finally loads. The X stage folder contains two subfolders, stage 1 and stage 2. Stage 1 contains three files referring to three different difficulties, normal, hard and very hard. Loading the normal difficulty, it loads you into the tornado stage. There is no dialogue and you can see Japanese subtitles. You can clearly understand that this is an early version of the tornado transformation cutscene. After it ends, you get to play the stage, but it's impossible to beat it since the robots fly so fast at you that you have no chance to destroy them and all of their attacks seem to hit the tornado. The hard difficulty doesn't have the cutscene nor robots to destroy. It seems like a sped up version of what the path of the tornado would have been for the stage. The only type of gameplay you get is the boss, which you get a prompt to instantly defeat if you wish. You even get a result screen and all. The very hard difficulty is the same as the normal one, but without the cutscene and even harder, since the robots are so fast that they disappear from the screen and unfortunately, none of the stage 2 files load. The tool folder contains three subfolders. The sparkle folder would have most likely been used for physics testing, as suggested by one of the files. The other two folders, I have no idea what they could have been used for, since neither the folder name or the file name inside suggest anything. This folder lists miscellaneous screens and functions. Selecting anything that doesn't crash the game simply flashes the screen blue for a moment and then kicks you back to the root of the menu. The presence of Wii Movie is interesting given that the final game shares almost nothing with the Wii release. Given pre-release screenshots showing old 360 assets that more closely resemble what is used in the Wii version, it's possible that Unleashed Wii was originally in intended to be more of a straight port rather than its own game. These three folders crash the game. This option boots you back to the Sega screen. This loads an early world map, specifically into the tutorial for it. This loads an early version of the credits, with a clearly incorrect font map. A promotional image, left unused in the final game, is shown in the place of the postcard photos of Sonic and Chip. This can't be skipped with start. This leads to a menu used for the E3 demo, with some differences. And this option just crashes the game. And that's the prototypes covered, now let's get into the trivia. In the ending cutscene, Chip says Sonic, you must live. But the subtitles mistakenly say Sonic, you have to live. Knuckles and Shadow were planned to be in the game, but the idea was scrapped for unknown reasons. Most likely because Sonic Team didn't want to include many of Sonic's friends to focus on refining the gameplay and story. An early concept design of Sonic's werehog form depicts Sonic with the appearance of a Yeti. The lead composer of the game, Tomoya Otani, uses musical samples in some of his tracks for the game, similar to how Hideki Naganuma and Otani himself used samples in Sonic Rush and Sonic Rush Adventure. One amusing coincidence is that the intro of Windmill Isle is based directly from a remix of a track from the arcade-only game Holy King, which Naganuma composed the entirety of. Your 
In the original concept work of the character Chip, his name was Whip, referring to whipped cream, as whipped cream was an early design motive. However, this was changed as some felt the name Whip carried too many negative connotations in English, such as whipping as an act of punishment or the injury known as whiplash. In the daytime rooftop run stage on both the PS3 and 360 versions of Sonic Unleashed, in the middle of one of the curves, a pedestrian will be reading a newspaper. Upon further inspection, there is a blurred picture of the box art for Sonic 06 to the upper right of the paper. Many of the street locations are named after other Sonic characters that don't appear in the game. More specifically, the members of Team Dark, Shadow, Rouge and E123 Omega, Silver, Blaze and the Chow. Exceptions to this include Knuckles and Cream. In the Werehog side missions, there is a place called Soliana Hotel. This is likely a reference to Sonic 06, which was set in the similarly spelled Soliana. The term werehog is derived from the words werewolf and hedgehog. However, this is a misnomer, considering that were in werewolf derives from the Old English were, meaning man, which means he is incorrectly referred to as manhog. A manhog would be a man who can morph into a pig, or someone who is half man, half pig. In Eggman Land, there are three robots whose names represent a console and a year that a Sonic game came out. These are EFMD1991, Mega Drive slash Genesis and Sonic 1, EFDC1998, Dreamcast and Sonic Adventure, and EFXB2006, Xbox 360 and Sonic 06. To further cement this idea, MD1991 was made first while XB2006 is the youngest and is apparently clumsy, glitchy and can't do anything right. In the opening cutscene and the one where Dark Guy arises towards the end of the game, inside Eggman's egg pod there is a Dreamcast and an Eggman game of sorts, which seems to be a parody of Sonic Adventure. There is also a Knight's game using art from Knight's Journey of Dreams. The file names for many of the game's regions differ from the names used in the game itself. Some of them are actually named after real-world locations. Adabat is referred to as Southeast Asia and is based on the Angkor Wat in Cambodia. Aporos is referred to as Mykonos, an island in Greece. Chunnan is referred to as China and is based on the Great Wall of China. Eggman Land is referred to as Eggman Base. Empire City is referred to as NY City and is of course based on New York City, with Central Park as its hub world. Holoska is referred to as Snow and might be based on Alaska due to the name. Mazuri is referred to as Africa and is based on the Great Mosque of Jenna in Mali. Shamar is referred to as Petra and is of course based on Petra in Jordan. Spagonia is referred to as European City slash Red Roofs and is based on European cities such as Madrid, Lisbon, London or Siena for example. The Werehog gameplay was conceived to help introduce newer gamers unfamiliar with the Sonic franchise to the series and is what influenced the use of Unleashed as a subtitle for Western markets since the game is called Sonic World Adventure in Japan. The gameplay for the Werehog is also heavily inspired in God of War. The game's signature vocal track Endless Possibility has yet to see any sort of streaming release outside of Japan. A likely reason for this is that Jared Reddick was a one-time guest vocalist for the Sonic series and attempts to have the song licensed for re-release would probably be a big undertaking. Even so, this is a weird exception when the game's soundtrack and every other vocal Sonic song have been readily available on streaming services. The live version performed at the Sonic 30th Anniversary Symphony concert is available on streaming services, however the vocals are provided by Nathan Sharp, with the original Reddick version still being absent. A version of the day-night system was originally planned for Sonic 06, but was cut due to that game's rushed production. This game revisits the idea. When recording the English dialogue for Sonic, Jason Griffith had a hoarse voice due to a strep throat. Interestingly enough, I also had what I think was strep throat the entire time I was recording that video game. I suffered. <laughs> I suffered for about two weeks straight recording that because it was 
there was so much screaming and I, my voice was just like every, every break we had, I was drinking, you know, hot soup, <laughs> just trying to get through the day, you know, but. He used this voice for Sonic's werehog form. It's even more impressive that he had to perform that infamous werehog dying scream with a strep throat. The game originally started out with the intent to create the third adventure entry. However, as development progressed and new elements were introduced, it eventually took on an identity of its own and officially became separated from the adventure games. The game's Japanese title is a leftover from this plan. The game's cover was originally meant to use lenticular printing at one point, in which Sonic would look normal by default, but would transform into his werehog form depending on your angle. This was ultimately scrapped in favor of depicting Sonic's normal and werehog forms as two halves instead, presumably due to costs. And for last, I wanted to mention that you can play Sonic Unleashed on the Xbox Series S and X via the backwards compatibility feature of the consoles. With this, you can play Sonic Unleashed at 4K running at 60fps. This would be the ultimate way to play Sonic Unleashed, 14 years after its release. And that's all I have for this episode, as I was writing this I thought this episode might be shorter than the other videos I made on Heroes and 06, which you should definitely check out, but I think it was very interesting exploring some unknown hidden content within this game. If you have a suggestion of any Sonic game I should cover next, leave it in the comments down below.